First question on this episode came from my guy Jordan and team keep it clean. What's up, baby? I hope y'all doing real, real good because we are. Anyway, he said, do you think Pat Ricard is a bubble player for this coming season? Now, before we get into this question, I got to give a special shout out to my guy KO, Kevin Ostriker from Locked On Ravens uh, and my guy Nitro from the Wonderkin show. Shout out to the both of them. Those are my guys, but they, they covered this before. Uh, a few weeks back, I know my guy KO covered it, and I think about a week ago, my guy Nitro covered it. Um, so it was interesting hearing their thoughts on it, but now Jordan is asking me to share my own. And he said, do you think Pat Ricard is a bubble player for this coming season? Initially, and he got more to say, initially when you hear that question, you could think, what? Pat Ricard, a bubble player? Why would Pat Ricard be a, bu a bubble player? Like, see, when I tried to say it just now, it wouldn't even, it, it wouldn't even, my mouth wouldn't even allow me to say that. Because it sounds so weird. But then when you really think about it, like really think about it, they keep bringing Ben Mason back. That's two years in a row they brought Ben Mason back. And I really thought last year when they brought Ben Mason back, I was thinking, okay, well, um, I guess that might be the end for Pat Ricard with the Ravens next year. But no, he's still there. But then you also think about the comments from Todd Munkin. Todd Munkin in his introductory press conference, he spoke about how fullbacks just aren't used like that anymore. They, and, and it's true. We know that like Ravens are one of the few teams that still even carry a fullback. And we expect this offense to be changing a lot. We still expect them to run now, but we expect them to do a lot more passing. So if you're doing a lot more passing, then Pat Ricard, even though we always call him wide receiver one, I think that could actually change this year. So if it, they're doing a lot more passing, then his role could be even more limited. And, and he's on... Uh, not a significant contract. Like it ain't like he making no crazy money, but still, Ravens could cut some corners and save some bread by releasing him. And you know, Ravens like, I don't know, man. But anyway, let let's continue with his next part of the question. He said, although. I don't see the offense going to 90% passing under Todd Munkin like some may think. I do question his usage. Ravens are one of the only two teams that really use a fullback in the NFL, the other team being the 49ers. And where they get their fullback from? I know you know. Shout out to Juice. He said, there may be another one. I don't know, but they, the position has died out. The Ravens can still run very well without him in that's a really good question, man. Really, really good question. And, I mean, we, we said the same thing. I guess I should have read everything that he wrote before I started running my mouth. But y'all know how it goes. Anyway, shout out to you, Jordan. Appreciate the question. Um, that's a tough one. That, that, that's a really tough one. Um, but ah, because it's like would, would the Ravens just keep him around just to have him as, as an option? Because you could go a much cheaper route than Ben Mason. Now, Ben Mason obviously hasn't proven himself in the NFL yet like Pat Ricard has. You know what Pat Ricard can do. You know what he's capable of. If, if I'm the Ravens, I'm keeping him. I'm keeping him this year because it's like, uh, like my, might as well. Might as well. You got them goal line packages and whatnot, and you could use them on some short down, short down, short yardage downs and whatnot. So, like... I, I, I'm keeping him. What What's another? I mean, I'm not sure exactly how much cutting him would save. What maybe like one or two mils? I know it ain't nothing crazy, but I, I'm I'm keeping him around because he again the short yardage game, goal line, third and one. When you just want to straight up line it line it up, and, and you want him to just knock somebody on their behind. Uh, so he can lead the way for J.K. Dobbins or Gus Edwards or Keaton Mitchell or Justice, whoever it may be, even some cases for Lamar. Just, okay, keep keep Pat Ricard because you know what you got already. Me again, y'all y'all know how I feel. I'm trying to have the best roster that I possibly can. The best roster. I wanted to be the strongest. I wanted to be OP, overpowered. I wanted, I wanted to go crazy. So if it's me, I'm keeping Pat Ricard. If I'm thinking like the Ravens are thinking, I think they keep Pat Ricard because, again, they, they also love Pat Ricard. Now, we know they, they, they got some players that they love before that they still got rid of, but I think Pat Ricard, I think his spot is safe. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. Right and great.
Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs Where you can ask any question you want to You want to be part of it, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com Or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons And special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons My guy Harold and my guy Jason, appreciate y'all a lot Just appreciate all the patrons uh, If y'all would like to send a question, y'all don't have to send an email Y'all, y'all know y'all got VIP status over here baby For the Team Keep It Clean patrons, if you want to send a question You just send it directly on Patreon Straight like that, man. Now, next question. It came from my guy, Stanley. He said, do you notice how the media is starting to create a narrative of Lamar Jackson not having any excuses when I never really heard him make any excuses? Oh, yeah, you know, Lamar, he ain't never going to make any excuses. He ain't never going to say, oh, man, well, it could have been like that. Oh, it should have been like that. You never hear him say anything like that. Now, uh, what the media is saying is they're like, hey, now, look, Ravens got you some receivers now, man. That's what a lot of fans have been talking about Because we sure have been Because the Ravens just <laughs> They had not been uh, But they're like Hey, Ravens got you some receivers They got you Odell Beckham Jr. Proven You still got Rashad Bateman He's like half proven We know what he could do you Just got to put it all together It's there They drafted Zay Flowers in the first round You got Nelson Aguilar uh, You still got Devin DuVernay And if he's used the right way He could do some stuff you got um, Laquan Treadwell, and they they like, hey, you got, like, what, five first-round picks at wide receiver? No excuses, buddy. But, um, so now it's all good, man. It's all good. Like, I, 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 yeah, yeah, they are creating a narrative that Lamar has no excuses, but, hey, if, if everybody could stay healthy, then no. There aren't any. They could get this thing done, man. They, they Like, I really, really believe that if Ravens can – Beat the biggest enemy that they've been facing For the past couple years That being health They can get it done They can really go all the way All the way Because time and time we've seen it Like if Lamar's healthy If he's going Ravens can rock with anybody Any team Any roster Any squad Any quarterback, receiver, defense what Anybody if Lamar's there, they can rock with anybody. Now, he can't always do it alone. He can't do it alone. Because obviously football the ultimate team sport. But if Lamar's healthy, they got a shot. So, yeah, I, I, I get it. I ain't mad at, at, at the commentators and all that. Say, oh, yeah, there's no excuses for Lamar. I ain't mad at that. Okay, whatever. So let, let there be none. Just Ravens got enough of what they need to get it done. Hey, if they want to add more, though. Be my guest. Next question came from my guy, Sedarian. He said, Hey, Raven, hope you and the fam are doing great. Oh, yeah, we're doing real good. He said, Just wanted to say that I'm real excited about the Ravens' moves at wide receiver this offseason. Uh, as I type this, the Ravens have five first rounders and two Super Bowl champs in the room. I can see Lamar getting career highs in all passing categories this season, especially under Todd Munkin. I agree. I can see that as well. Um, I think a lot of that, a lot of us could see that with a 17 game schedule, them being expected to pass a lot more, especially how they've made significant investments at the wide receiver position. We could definitely see that Lamar being another year older, another year of experience in the league. And now him, him having some receivers that have experienced everything in the league, being first round picks, winning Super Bowls, that being uh, Odell Beckham Jr. and Nelson Aguilar. Uh, this like, yeah, man, it's, it's just time. But anyway, he said, but one thing that has been an Achilles heel for this team is getting past the divisional round. You all right. Uh, even during the Ravens last Super Bowl run, the divisional round was still the toughest game. It required a mile-high miracle and a second overtime to get the victory. Unfortunately, the divisional round has been the Ravens' ceiling since then. Ooh. Ooh. Because when they uh, – because Flacco, Flacco then made the playoffs after the Super Bowl. They made it in 2014. Um, they, is, that the, is that when they beat the Steelers? Is that when they, like, they whooped up on the Steelers and then they lost to the Patriots in that crazy game? I think that was that. 2015, everybody was hurt. 2016, I don't think they made playoffs. 2017, they didn't make playoffs. Oh, yeah, yeah, they got kicked. That, that, that was that uh, 2017 was the fourth and 12, the Bengals game. 2018, Lamar Jackson. So into him. Uh, then they, they lost that playoff game against the Chargers after playing them like two weeks prior and not changing anything. 2019, that was a 14 and two. 
Uh, they got home field advantage, but then they got beat up on by the Titans in that playoff game at the crib. Then 2020, um, they beat the Titans because uh, their whole offseason was remember the Titans, and they built their team to beat the Titans. But <laughs> after that, uh, they played the Bills in a divisional round, and then they lost. That's when Lamar got concussed when Pat McCarry, he got jealous of playing quarterback, so he wanted to play quarterback, and he wanted Lamar to be a wide receiver. So he overthrew Lamar, and Lamar they had to go run and get the ball, and then he got landed on his head. Then 2021, no, they did not make the playoffs. They had That's when Lamar got hurt, and they just, yeah, they started off so hot. And then 2022 it was last year, started off hot. Lamar got hurt. Tyler Huntley was the playoff guy. There low expectations for all of us, but yeah. But the game was really close. So, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Appreciate, appreciate those, those reminders. Anyway. Uh, he said, oh, okay. He listed it. I, I should have just read it. My fault. He said, 2014, divisional round loss to the Patriots. 2018, divisional round loss to the Titans. Well, no, that was 2019. But, anyway. 29, then he said 2019, divisional round loss to the Bills. Well, that was the 2020 season, but it's all good. He said, I don't want to get too deep into this, but that's always been my benchmark to see if the Ravens are really a Super Bowl team. I mean, you got to win in the playoffs, period. If you're really a Super Bowl team like that, obviously that's when it counts the most. Regular season is what gets you there in position to make it to the Super Bowl, but playoffs, is that's when everything's on the line. That's when everything counts that much more. So Ravens, they better come with it this year. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, Manuel. He said, what if? Ola and Graven, shout out from Mexico. I know we're all speculating on the Ravens' offensive potential, and we know what our defense can bring now under McDonald. Shout out to the McTrio on the weekend. But what if we end up seeing a repeat of Super Bowl 47? And this time, instead of the lights go out, the game is over like Georgia has done the past two years in their championship games. In 2022, Georgia won 33-18, and in 2023, 65-7. That was under Todd Munkin. So... How do you think the score will go if we face San Fran in the Super Bowl? P.S. Lamar for Super Bowl MVP. Call the number one pick overall in 2040. So, how do I think the score will go if uh, we played San Francisco in the Super Bowl? Hey, look, I, I don't even care what the score was. As long as, Raven, as long as when the clock hits zero at the end of the game, Ravens had more points than the 49. Hey, I'm good or whatever. Score could be 27, 26, 35, 2. 88 to 17. I don't care what the score be. As long as Ravens had more points, that's fine with me. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Like